All right, I've been uh, spending the day working on network settings so I can share everything from up the house through the Wi-Fi that we have all set up. I just, you know what it is, there's always something with the network. It's just never, it's like it has a personality and it just does not want to cooperate with me. Uh, in addition to getting the network all set up, which is now working mostly, almost, uh, it's working good enough. I also downloaded uh, Simply 3D. I normally use Cura uh, for my slicing software. Uh, since I use the Creole D, uh S10, uh, Cura is kind of like the entry level version. I downloaded uh, uh, Simply 3D, which is a uh, pay for, uh, not a bad price, 150 bucks. And uh, wow, right off the bat, the slicing algorithm between uh, Cura and Simply 3D, uh, uh, four hours faster in how it set everything up. So uh, it's a lot rougher program. I think I have all the settings, the infill, the, the raft, everything is all set really equal, but just a huge difference, half, 50% of the time uh, using Simply 3D. So uh, I need to play with that some more, but really happy I bought that because this thing is supposed to take about four days to print. We have the front and back panel of the uh, grow walls uh, printing right now. I also spent the day updating the design to make, try, just continue to make stuff easier and easier and easier to manufacture. Uh, lots of stuff went into the design today to make it uh, so the 3D printer can handle it a lot easier uh, and not have so much um, raft material, support material in it. So uh, I calibrated everything. I worked with Modix. Again, they're in Israel uh, and they've been very good at replying to my request for help. Uh, I think I got everything all set up. Uh, I mean, fairly painless uh, as far as getting it going, uh, there were some things I didn't know, uh, and they helped me out with that, and it was all easy once we got there, but now it's the big test. These walls are printing, everything's sliced, it's in here, I see it, it's happening, uh, so we're going to leave it overnight, uh, and we're going to see what happens. Um, oh, for temperature, I don't have a temperature probe, I, I, I need to buy one, but um, Inside of here, it is very warm. Uh, I would say it's probably 70, 80 degrees inside of there. This enclosure is doing a fantastic job of keeping it warm inside. And that's great news because we won't have to have as much heat out here all the time or cooling. Well, we will need cooling, sorry. So uh, I do have a solution on the way though. I spent some time looking for some stuff and we got something coming there. But anyway, big test here. What is the point of the test? Is it going to crow's nest tonight? So I, the first time I ran the Creole day overnight, you go through all this setup, and uh, is it one thing's wrong? You forgot to do something. I remember the first time I tried to print an F15 little model, and I didn't turn the support on. So you get a little bit of the base on it, and then it just goes ding, <laughs> and it's all over the place. I didn't do that this time. Support's definitely on. Uh, so we're going to see what's happening here uh, tomorrow morning. Uh, we'll see how we do. Well, no crow's nest, Bandit says. You notice anything wrong about that uh, printer head? Like the fact there's no material coming out the bottom of it? That's not good. Well, that's why we do these things. You got to test. I was telling my neighbor, you know, getting a 3D printer, it's, it's like getting any brand new tool that you've never really used before. You've, you've got to learn how to use the tool appropriately and properly um, before you're really efficient at, uh, before you see your efficiency gain. So we need to stop this, figure out what's going on. I, I think I know. I think what happened is this tube that's on here is too short and they're sending me a new one. And that tube is what feeds the uh, material into the, uh, the nozzle. And when it gets to its far extent, in fact, we can try it right now. When it gets to its far extent, it pulls out. It was gunked up in there. I just felt it accept it. What I'm doing right now is I'm going to tell it to do some extruding here. Yeah, I felt it just take it. Do another. You can do it in different increments here. So here, check this out. We'll pull this up off. This is pretty cool. Whoa! <laughs> Look at that. This all goes in the recycle bin for those that are wondering. It is a fully recyclable material. You could actually get a grinder for this and you can grind this all back up. 
uh, and make your own filament, but uh, apparently it's very, very time consuming and uh, not hugely efficient. But something we might want to look at. I don't know what's going on here, uh, so I'm going to go contact the manufacturer and, uh, and I can see gears turning. Whoa! You can see gears turning, um, but I'm not getting. Yeah, I agree. It's better than the first time I've ever done a 3D print, for sure. But it might also be that I'm printing so much that the nozzle head I have on there is too small. So I'm going to go do some research and we're going to come back to this tomorrow. All right, so it's the next day. I spent this morning uh, doing quite a bit of research and, and I made this last night on the Creelty uh, 3D printer in the house. You guys got any idea what this is? Any idea? If only it was a live broadcast, huh? We could take bets on it. All right, I'll tell you what it is. It is a nozzle holder. Because uh, one of the things that I was looking at is, you know, you get a big printer like this and you only have a 0.4 millimeter nozzle on it, it's gonna take forever to print. And that last print that I was doing was gonna take four days, uh, which is way too long and totally unnecessary. So I do have a bunch of extra nozzles that came with this. So we're gonna take them out of that big pile of stuff there, which is all the stuff that goes with this printer. I just, that's the box I had. And we're gonna start organizing it. And then um, I also spent a bunch of time doing uh, some setting uh, research and I re-sliced a file that we're gonna load in here and see how it does. But we gotta get it all recalibrated first. So I'm gonna show you guys uh, that process as we go through it. So let's jump in. I need to re-slice because we have the 0.4s in the machine right now. So I thought I had a 1.2, but I don't. I just have the one. But look, that's a nice little holder. Let's see if, if the uh, designer, I got this off of Thingiverse. If you guys are brand new to 3D printing, oh, well, they need to be screwed in though. If you're brand new to 3D printing, you gotta go check out Thingiverse because that's how you do baselining. <laughs> By baselining, I mean, you don't need to recreate it if someone else has already done it. So go grab their stuff and uh, you can download a bunch of free designs and then you just print them. And people have thought of a lot of different stuff. So it's really cool. But you know what? I think this particular design is gonna end up being a little flawed only in one sense. And that is that they didn't give enough space between the top of the nozzle. Oh, in their defense, these are bigger. They probably designed them for a different type. These are E3D Volcano compatible nozzles because we've got the volcano extruder on there okay so either way though it accomplished what i really needed which was just a place to put these um so you can see the top there how it's just so anyway not that big a deal what we'll do is we'll just leave it we'll turn it into a little stand like a so there we go. Oh, it's beautiful. Beautiful, beautiful. Just a cute little stand. Okay, what we gotta do though is take the tip off that's on there, which is 0.4, and put on the 0.1. So the power switch of this thing is all the way in the back over there. So what I did is I put a uh, power brick up top there. Surge protector strip, excuse me, a power strip. Hate to get that wrong. Uh, and that allowed me, oops, I need a home first, home it. Allows me to just quickly get up there. Got my little step stool, AKA a bucket. Uh, just step up there, turn it on. And uh, then I got my little lever over here that holds the door open just cause that's how everything works with the stairs. So I'm gonna get this, you gotta hit home first and then we're gonna bring it out. There's our print head over there. I'm gonna go move. Let's move it 10 that way. Let's move it hundred that way. Ooh, and let's bring it out. Um, Do that again. Now I'm dropping the Z axis to give me some easier access under there. Okay, now I gotta go look up the instructions because I forgot. So I've logged on to the Modic support site, which if when you buy a printer, they give you your log on information. And what I'm doing is I'm just going through, I, <clears throat> I've only put one uh, nozzle into this thing and that's during the initial install. So I'm going through the uh, process to uh, insert a new um, new nozzle, which is pretty straightforward. You gotta heat up 
uh, the nozzle to 250 uh, centigrade and then we're going to use a pair of pliers and the uh, little wrench that came with it here and we're going to replace the uh, 4 mil 0.4 millimeter with a 1 millimeter and uh, we'll get to uh, get to work on that here. It's heating up so I have this web interface uh, local network you don't have to be on the internet to use it but I'm this is all stuff I can use to control the printer uh, from up at the house this is one of the big reasons I wanted the network uh, out here my local net is because I can be up there and I can log on to the printer out here as long as it's turned on of course and I can actually start a print or uh, see an error or, uh, I can't watch it yet because I don't have a camera but I want to get a camera on it so I can watch it from up there and uh, see how things are going um, because you, you kind of want to keep an eye on these things, especially when you're brand new to it, until you get everything dialed in. Because uh, if something goes wrong, it goes wrong, and it could be quite a few hours, and you can come back to one heck of a big mess. So this thing looks like it's now up to temperature. Uh, so I am now supposed to go over <clears throat> and loosen the old one and put the new one in. All right, so this is the, just the protector cover there. Woo, that is warm. All right. This is all very sensitive, so really you don't have it too tight, is what they say. It's just tight enough to loosen it. And then you have to have this thing heated so that everything tightens up correctly and loosens up correctly. You'd expect it to be warm, and it is. It had detected that I was removing it and turned itself off, so that's even better. Okay, there, I'll put that in our fancy dandy holder here. And then we've got a one incher. All right, so now what we're going to do is go finger tight. And then we got to go heat this nozzle up to actually do the full tightening. All right, so that's in there, finger tight. So now we can go turn that on, get it hot. Just got the nozzle put in, got the, nozzle, the heat bank cover uh, reinstalled. That thing is nice and toasty. I'm going to hit stop on everything here. Oh wait, stop. I forgot something. I was supposed to make sure the filament extruded through that nozzle. It takes time for that Z-axis to come up. And it's coming, it's coming. Z offset calibration. Okay, so it just home now. It's supposed to come out to daddy. Come to papa. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put this stack of paper right here. And then I'm gonna reduce it down. What I'm doing is I'm bringing the Z-axis up and we're waiting for friction to occur on that nozzle. This spacing is about that of a business card, which is about, oh, a little too much. It's about 0.5 millimeters. There we go. Just want friction on it. I'm supposed to go copy that number, which is 0.54, it looks like, on into the config file. This happened to me last time. Made it all the way through this. I'm supposed to be able to go into my console here. So I think it's better if you just do the whole thing. It tells you on here, don't do this from both of the panels. You have to do it one or the other, from either from your computer or from the panel. I did it over there this time. And I remember when I first did it, it didn't tell me. It's supposed to show you the thing in the console, stopped height, yeah. And it didn't tell me stopped height. So we're going to do it again. This time we'll do it from here and we're doing Z offset calibration. Hit yes. Back. Now I have to go back and forth to the printer. And uh, it's homing right now. These cute little things here. I think this 0.4 thing got jammed on me. So I need something to... Oh, that's definitely jammed. The smaller nozzles are more prone to jamming. There's my 3D printer telling me that it's ready. So now I gotta go put this in, but I gotta control it all from here. The thing that happened to me last time is that these offsets are slightly different and you wanna make sure you don't crash it. You don't wanna crash that printer nozzle into the bed. So you gotta do this little action here. You can see how doing it from the terminal on the computer is better, but it doesn't present the height, clearly, at least for a noob like me, it might be, might be somewhere, but it's not in a spot where it's 
easy to see. We're almost there, guys. See, I'm getting my steps in. Things you gotta do to get your steps in. There we go, we hit it. So now we're gonna back off a little bit. It's a little too tight there. That was too much. And it has different increments, so that's why I'm, you see me going back and forth now is because of the different increments. I'm going with a smaller increment now to really get it dialed in. There we go, that's it right there. And then we hit okay. That's gonna tell me to remove the piece of paper. Removed. Okay. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna write on this. We're gonna say this is our one millimeter head. And you know what I should do is I should print the different thicknesses of the offset and keep that in my little box here. All right, so now it says copy. Now I come over to G code console. Yeah, see now it tells me 0.619, it's right there. 0.619. So then I go into setting, system editor, config G, offset 1.076. So then if we take this, and we'll watch what we're gonna do here. We're gonna take this piece of paper and we're gonna fold it in half because that's the thickness that we use for the other one. I'm gonna have to do this every time I know but if I see a pattern, I'm gonna write down that this is the 1.076 offset on here, which is for the 0.4 millimeter. And then for the one millimeter, it's Z0.619 is the offset. So we're gonna keep those numbers and we'll see how they go next time that we do a change out. And we're gonna hit save changes. Would you like to reboot the device? Yes, I would, booyah. And now, we are ready to do some prints. Alrighty, Dietie. So what we're gonna do now is we are going to upload uh, the cube test. There we go, at one millimeter. All right, so now what's happening is magical pixie dust is moving from this computer up into the atmosphere, back down through the atmosphere, and over to the pixie dust catcher over in the 3D printer. See, and these, comes, these things come with this magical pixie dust and uh, it's uploading all of its pixie dust in there and heating up the element. I've got the bed already heated and we're gonna print another one of these guys. Uh, I was told that this is a good print. I took pictures of it and sent it in and they gave me some feedback on things that I can do to make it even better. But what we're doing now is we're actually changing the, uh, the settings from the 0.4 millimeter up to the one millimeter. So we gotta see how that turns out. It should go a lot faster. Uh, but we'll see. And then what I need to do is I actually have Simplify 3D, uh, the slicer that I bought. I have it up at the house and you're allowed to install it on two machines. So we're gonna install it on the other SolidWorks machine that I have here. This is Hal. Um, and uh, I gotta get the Modix set up in here. You can see that right here, this thing doesn't look like that. So I'm gonna go through that setup process while this thing is printing. And then I need to re-slice the grow walls uh, that I have because um, what we did yesterday, that print was going to take four days and it failed um, because the nozzle got plugged. Uh, that's been confirmed here as I've uh, <laughs> tried to get stuff to go through that air uh, and that doesn't even want to go through there. So I got to clean that nozzle out, but we got the one millimeter in there and I might want to even buy a 1.2 millimeter uh, nozzle from E3D because based on the slicing I did, it would be 19 hours. Yeah, I'm pumping a lot more material through there a lot faster, but this printer is supposed to be able to handle all that. You don't buy a printer like this and it can't handle big stuff. So going from 48 hours to 19 hours makes it much more realistic. And then it's just a matter of tweaking everything to make sure it's uh, all dialed in. And the good thing about uh, the one millimeter, 1.2 millimeter prints is they're actually stronger than the smaller ones. They don't have as much detail but honestly, these things are flat and we don't really care that much about really finite detail. Um, so we're gonna see how it all goes. We gotta work through it all and figure that out. I hear it going, let's go check it out. So the very first thing I notice is, hey, nothing coming out of there. And so we're gonna hit pause. This uh, printer has the feature to pause, figure out what I did wrong yet. I have, well, at least I have a really good idea of what I did wrong. So now it's recording its position and being able to pick up where you left off is a very important thing. So what we wanna do here is, you know, we're gonna cut that bad section out because I think we do have a bad section there. 
that I think it got tweaked because I don't have the full tubing yet. That's coming from Israel. And I think it got a little tweaked in there. And uh, that caused the last air. So now we're going to shove that all in there. And what we're going to do is going to go over here, control, move, Z goes down. And then we're going to go to extrude. We're going to extrude about 20 millimeters. So maybe I did something wrong and something else is going funky here, but I'm not getting a warm and fuzzy about this. Oh, there it grabbed it. It grabbed it. Do that again. Here it comes. Ooh. All right. That's what we needed to do. Okay, so now we can hit stop on that. So another thing, if you're looking at these wires and everything, there's supposed to be a wire cover here and it shipped with uh, an older wire cover that stopped it from going to the Y home and that's in the instructions. So their instructions were updated uh, and they said, don't use that one. We're gonna send you a new one. So they are sending me the new one. So I just have all these wires back here all just strapped into place. Uh, but you can see we're clearly, we're putting material down It's just amazing. It's so amazing watching these things. Very cool. All right, so I'm gonna close the hatch, let all that heat stay in there. And while that does its thing, let's go get Simplify 3D set up. All right, guys. Well, uh, what we have, this, oops, let me do. There is uh, Simplify 3D. This is the slicing software that we use. And what it does is, if you're not familiar with this, it's pretty cool. Um, it, it goes through every layer and it creates what's called G-code. Uh, and G-code is machine, I'm simplifying here, uh, machine language that tells the printer head or the cutter head on like a CNC or plasma cutting machine where to move, how to move, how fast to move, and what to do when it gets there. Uh, it has a whole bunch of other stuff in it too, and someone who is hard up on G-code would probably break me across the coals on that little explanation, but it's pretty simple. Uh, now what we do, you, you bring your models in from SolidWorks. So we export our models. This is the front panel, this is the back panel, and then we have three panel sets that go together to form a full three panel wall. And the cool thing about this design is you could have just these two by themselves. And you can see that we could actually send you, you know, you could buy the files and you can print it yourself at different scales. And I have to play with that scaling thing, but this bed represents the entire print bed and you can see it's full. So, what we have to do now is come in and actually tell it what's up as far as settings go. So what we're going to be doing, I have an Excel file here. We're going to be changing the, so we're going to say the nozzle diameter is one. And then I created this little table because I'm not the world's greatest 3D printer person. I, I can't even claim any great knowledge. But what I did is I went on the web and I pulled all the settings for the different nozzles, at least what people suggest. And this is something you have to spend a lot of time going through figuring out. So I have this little table uh, and it's based on nozzle diameter. So here's the nozzle that we're going to be doing. This is as big as we can get right now, but they do sell a 1.2. And I want to know my layer height, extrusion width. So how thick is it going to be? Line width 1.75. So come over here. This is what I'm doing there. This isn't actually changing any settings. This is just in Excel. And what I'm doing is I'm keeping track of different tests. I'm going to, I'm going to do different things here, play around with it. Uh, I'm going to do top layers of five um, and infill of 5% is going to be my setting for these bigger nozzles. So I got five bottom layers. We're going to do three outline shells. We'll do two infill percent is 5% outline overlap. We'll leave that at 60% support infill 5% and then the speed here. So I currently have the speed set to 3000 millimeters per minute. Um, I don't know if that's a good idea, but we're gonna try it. So now what I gotta do is come into here and I gotta remember all these settings. All right, extrusion multiplier, we leave that manual. Okay, so then here is the extrusion width, which is 1.75. Now I'm actually changing settings. And then I go to layer, primary layer height, layer height is 0.75. Top layers, we're going to go up to five. Bottom layers are three. Outline perimeters, two. Those are all basics. We don't change those. 
Uh, we're not changing that. Infill, okay. Infill percent is 5%. Oh, wasn't done yet. Darn it. Infill, 5%. Outline overlap is 60%. We're going to crank that up. Infill extrusion width. I think we just leave that the same. Okay, I think. Yeah. Support. We are going to do support miller, but we're only going to do 5% infill. I'm going to crank this temperature up to 250 C. All right, it's at 68. 68 Celsius. All right, an extruder is at 250. There we go. Now that's right. We're not doing anything there. We're not doing anything there. This is staying. Ooh, is that default is 3600. That seems awfully fast to me. Oh boy, that seems like way too fast. Well, we'll try it, you know, why not? Let's see what happens. I think we got everything set now. So I hit OK, prepare to print, and this tells me it's going to take 13 hours and 24 minutes, which tells me I probably screwed something up in there. And what it does is it shows me all the layers. So I can actually hit play here. Now let's slow it down. Let's slow it way down. Bring it back to the beginning here and hit play. So now it's showing the buildup of all this stuff. Whoa, it's amazing. And then we're going to rotate around here because I'm not sure it's printing the support under here like it's supposed to be. It's supposed to be support there, and I don't see support. I can tell you this, Raph, that uh, between this program, uh, Simplify 3D, which you pay for, and Cura, I mentioned it previously, you know, Cura is a lot easier to use, but this has a lot more knobs and bells and whistles. So, uh, you know, I got to take it for what it is. No sooner had I said I need to work on it, and this print was already done, showing how big a difference the uh, one millimeter nozzle makes. The other one took hours to do. So let's check this out. So I think in their file, they must have done something because whoop, clearly, can you see that little edge right there? There's an edge. Now that looks like a file issue and not, not a printer issue because you can see it's consistent on both of these sections and symmetrical all the way around. It's, it's not out of alignment or anything. So let's get, these look like the tops. So here's the bottoms. And then here's the tops. And this thing feels a lot more solid. Yeah, let's drop this guy. Yeah, way more solid. So, uh, man, I don't know why it did that though. <clears throat> there we go. All right, guys, I figured it out. Uh, I had to go, I had to go read the instructions. Damn, those instructions, they're useful after all. Okay, so I had all the settings set up correct. I did that right. And then uh, what you had to do is there's a little button here that says generate support. And I just hit generate automatic supports and it put all my supports in for my overhangs because what the supports are is if you have like, let's say this is a vertical section and then there's a horizontal section that comes out like this and this is empty underneath of it. Well, it'll give it a shot to print and sometimes it even works, but it might go like that and it be off, you know, or it might just completely fail because you can't print on nothing. All right, so what it'll do is it'll put a little bit of support down underneath uh, and allow it uh, to, uh, to print. So those are all in there now. Hit save on this file and prepare to print. Okay, prepare to print and it says 13 hours and 34 minutes. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna write that down. 13 hours and 34 minutes because this is all testing here. We got a lot of testing. This is not, by the way, this is not the food grade PLA. Uh, that's all hung up because of the virus and everything. It's hung up in Canada still and we gotta get it down here. If that doesn't show up, we're in big doggy doo doo. Uh, but I'm using the PLA that I have right now, which is not food grade. Uh, but it'll do the job. So now we're gonna save the G code. Front and back panel, one millimeter, version one. That's my test. That's how I keep track of everything there. 
that matches the Excel file. So now that's all loading or saving. So once this saves, then I'll show you how easy this next piece is. All right, come over here and uh, invalid tool number. Let's, I've learned you should home every time in between your prints or any activity, you really should home uh, just to make sure everything's fine. Once it's done homing, then all there it is right there. We're gonna upload. All right, now what it has to do is my heater, the nozzle has to heat up to 250 degrees Celsius. The uh, bed is already at temperature because it stays at temperature. Uh, now I'm putting it warm because that is recommendations that I read from others. So if you know otherwise, please leave a comment down below. Somewhere between 210 and 250 C is where people are saying you should be printing at. I went with 250 C because we're pumping a lot of material through with the one millimeter nozzle and you really want that nozzle hot so it, it melts really good and then has a chance uh, to adhere to the layer below it. If you go too cool, then it won't be uh, melty enough, it won't be soft enough, it won't be sticky. It'll still be hard and it'll fall apart. When you touch it, it'll fall apart. Uh, so I cranked it up to 250, we'll see how that goes. And uh, we're gonna see if the volcano earns its name. I, certainly, I'm very impressed. <clears throat> I'm impressed, this, this here took like, uh, what, two hours to print? This took like 20 minutes to print. Um, clearly a winner as far as how everything goes. Uh, but we have a lot of testing to do. I, I don't think we're gonna be able to take these towers that come out of here and, and use them on this first go round. All right, so the G-code has made its way here and we're about ready to see some magic happen. See filament coming down. Hey, let me get you guys closer here. Look how much material's going down. Wow. Now I'm already concerned with those little loop-de-loops there. They seem like they're probably supposed to be there, but they don't look quite right to me, so we'll have to keep an eye on that. I don't know what caused those. So this is the perimeter print, and you know what? It looks like it's just not adhering to the bed as well as it should. That back line's a lot straighter. Oh yeah, look at that. Oh, we got a problem. Pause. All right, so what's happening is it is pinching. The, uh, this is getting pulled, and then it's uh, crimping. You know, we're just gonna take that all off of there. That is a lot of material. I, you know, learning the learning curve here. Get those all under there. We're gonna restart the whole thing. So this little guy here is pulling and then it's crimping it when it goes like that. So what we really need to do is we need to get this thing tight, tight, which means I probably used the wrong device here, whatever that's called. But then it's also pulling tight over here, which is then, yeah, it pulled it. That's what happened, all right. So until this other part gets here, what I'm inclined to do <clears throat> a few different things. One, some old uh, boots from uh, spark plugs. And what I can do is I can actually, two things. I can run one all the way up to where this hose comes out of the, uh, through the panel and protect, uh, protect the element coming in which would then extend my hose. Again, they sent me the wrong one. So that's why we have to do this. But that hose still would not be long enough really give this guy a pinch here. No, we need to file that up. File that, okay, the hardware store we go. Still too small, all right, do that again. So that can still move freely in there. You know, that needs to come through there further. That's still gonna. We got goo coming out the bottom. Pretty little goo. Whoop, there it goes. Remember, it made the perimeter around. Uh, this is not part, the perimeter is not part of the actual print. It's, it's a nice way to clean the uh, print head, kind of get your bar uh, boundaries set, make sure everything's good to go. So if you do have an error, uh, it's not the end of the world. All right, so you just pulled tight here. The, it's working, everything's working like it's supposed to here. Uh, if this hose was actually longer, it would be right where it's supposed to be at. It would be in the print head itself there. But when it comes back here, we're looking for a kink in this thing. Hopefully this is long enough to present, prevent it from kinking. It's got nice movement in it, 
But honestly, I don't know. I mean, I'm, I'm not a pro at this, so we're gonna learn here together. All right, well, it made it past the kink. So now basically I need to go surf the net and figure out ways to entertain my mind, uh, which there's plenty to do right now. And we'll see how this thing goes. So hey, if you like this video so far, uh, be sure to give it a thumbs up and hit subscribe. A lot of people get unsubscribed on YouTube these days. Uh, ring the little bell so you get notified when I put out new videos. And don't forget, you can follow us on Facebook, Twitter, uh, and on Instagram for some more up-to-date stuff. Uh, and then uh, if you really want to support our efforts, you can do so through Patreon. All right, I'm going to let this thing keep going, see how well it does. It's printing the main structure now. Blower might be a little too low. So there's a blower fan on the nozzle, and that could possibly explain a little bad bed adhesion and a blower on soft plastic might be enough to blow it right off where it's supposed to be but everything's looking really good so far in the actual print it's like watching fire man i tell you out in the shop here i see the swallows have returned which is great for killing bugs but it's bad for them putting nest up there but uh i told you i'd find something to do so i got my drill press set here and we're gonna drill this thing out and make it work whoa there we go go let's go see how well that performs i drilled through before i did that i drilled through the other ones and now i screwed it all up <laughs> if i would have not drilled through we'd be okay the ones that i didn't drill through on are actually perfect look at that this thing's screaming for a version 2.0 the top's just a little thick. That's way more material than what you need. And the holes need to be bigger and offset. Yeah. Well, anyway. You know what? At least it holds it nice right now. That's not my design, but uh, hey, you know what? Somebody else put a lot of time and effort into this. They did a nice job. Just some things that change. And, you know, that's how product development goes. Someone takes a crack at the first one, and then people come behind and make things better and do things different based on what they learn and what they like and what they don't like. So... Okay, well, let's go look at the print and see how that's coming along. We are putting down a lot of material there. It's already going faster. Well, I mean, obviously it's going faster than the last one. Um, that last print, I'd say it took about five hours to get that much material down, so it's definitely cooking. Um, it's all gonna be a matter of that face down front because that face down edge, or it, it's hard to say, it's a face down face, <laughs> uh, is the exterior looking face. So it really depends how nice that turns out with the thicker material. We might end up having to do a multi-process print where we print um, using the 0.4 millimeter or 0.6 maybe, and then stop, switch out nozzles and go with the uh, the bigger nozzle for everything but I, that's really advanced printing and uh, i don't really want to do that i really do appreciate everybody following along with us uh this in some for some interesting times here we got to get this thing really rocking and rolling so this is like my primary focus right now and then we got to get back to life pod 2 uh and the build out there but i think we're really going to be focused on getting these grow walls getting the grow towers going and uh any extra time i have will be spent doing fabrication on life pod 2. a lot of work to do a lot of work and not a lot of time and not a lot of money left. So we'll see how it all goes. I hope everyone's safe out there. May God bless you and your families. Thanks for following along again. Be sure to follow us on uh, Facebook, Twitter, and on Instagram. If you'd like to support us, you can do, through, do so through Patreon. And uh, make sure you hit subscribe, ring that little bell so you get notified of all my new videos. Oh. In the meantime, this is Real Martian. Out. Be safe, folks.